I begin. It's July. I just finished my fourth year teaching. This was a year like no other. I'm sure other educators can relate to the kind of growth or bad feelings. Maybe you experienced stress, anxiety, or a million other things. In this video, I want to open a discussion for the kinds of teaching out there, experiences I've had as a teacher, promises that I want to make, and what I'm trying to do, my overarching purpose as an educator. So my big secret is I never meant to be a teacher. I started university as a guitar student and I taught private lessons to make some extra money on the side so I could eat Chipotle. I drove to Thomasville, Georgia from Tallahassee. It was a 40 minute drive and my friend Tim Stice, who now builds guitars somewhere in North America, I'm not sure where. But Michael built this music academy and hired me and Tim, two classical guitar students at Florida State University to come in and teach music classes. We had this classical music background, so we had to kind of adjust our um, pedagogical practices and figure out, okay, what does a student need? It might not be exactly what I'm prepared with as a classical musician. Maybe they want to learn rock songs or country songs or to write their own music in a singer-songwriter kind of style. So already I was starting to get a feel for what it's like to work with other people who are trying to get somewhere in a skill or knowledge or attitude, whatever that learning is. In this case, we're trying to learn guitar. So that was the first step in my teaching journey. I was a private guitar instructor in Thomasville, Georgia. I ended up changing my major through university to English. It was a concentration in editing, writing, and media, which had the moniker we affectionately called as a nickname, the 21st century English degree. I worked with nonprofits thinking I was gonna be a fundraiser. And in our senior year, my partner and I um, were at this open mic night in Gainesville, Florida. And she whispered to me between one of the sets and said, so I got this job in Madrid and I think we should move. And that threw everything up in the air. I knew she had applied. It was the only job she applied for. And I had applied for a few things that I didn't get. So let me take a step back and think about how I came to Madrid and what I was looking for. Originally coming to Madrid, I was looking for nonprofit jobs in fundraising and communication. I didn't find any of that. It can be tricky with a visa and the kinds of things you can be hired for. So I ended up getting a teaching job. I found out about teaching in Madrid by Google, and I was really just looking for how can I get a visa, and it turns out many people have blogged and video logged and written on forums and discussion boards and Facebook groups and everything else that you can live abroad as an English teacher. This was actually an upsetting idea to me because I didn't like the idea of taking my culture into schools and competing with, um, in the constraints of a timetable in school, whatever hours kids are learning different material about, you know, whatever their curriculum is. I felt kind of um, shaky on the idea that English was one of those things that um, should be a part of their curriculum, and especially me as like an American English speaker. There was a recent discussion about residential schools in Canada, and how it was essentially cultural genocide, because they were taking indigenous people out of their communities and placing them in schools, forcing them to wear certain clothes, to speak their non-native language, to learn English, and to adopt other cultural practices that were Canadian and not indigenous. And so I think the history of going somewhere to teach something, especially English, which has such a complex and sad history, um, I just didn't feel like I was informed enough to feel solid about moving to Madrid. I did move to Madrid because I wanted to stay with my partner and so I became what is called an auxiliar de conversación. 
I didn't apply directly through the Ministry of Education to become an exiliac. I actually applied through a program called CIEE, and they have a particular application process that can be included with a stay with a local family and a cultural onboarding process, like an introduction to Spanish culture and traditions and life and all of that. And some cultural experiences like, you know, you go to have tapas with a group of people and see a flamenco show. I was really nervous about my placement because I wasn't sure if I was going to be in Madrid or in Galicia or Valencia or anywhere else in Spain. Luckily I did get placed where I wanted to and it was actually really close to where my partner was teaching in Pozuelo, just north of Madrid. It's like a small suburb from the main city center. And my first year was really rough. I had about 200 students, grades kinder through sixth grade, which is where elementary or primary school ends in Spain. It was really up to me to go on YouTube, online, reading blogs, seeing what other people have learned from their experiences. And those people are really not practiced professional educators either. And when I say practiced professional educators, the people who go through this program are not typically people who graduate with an educator's certificate or have a kind of pedagogical background, a formal education in teaching and learning. So you really miss key parts of child development, brain development, psychology, this information that's like deeply embedded in your formal learning. It feels like instinct when you're acting on the moment, but it comes from formal training. And so even when I'm looking at blogs and videos and places online, other resources, people who have been through the Auxiliatis program, I still struggle to build engaging activities and understand my learners. I didn't really hear what pedagogy was all about. I didn't know about differentiation or enrichment. I didn't know how to make small groups. I didn't know how to pace a lesson. I didn't know how to write a lesson plan or think about uh, learning outcomes or objectives or any of that. I didn't know about individualized learning plans. I mean, all of this stuff I didn't know about. In my CIEE course, we had discussion boards and reading and writing assignments. So I had to think about what I wanted to accomplish as a teacher, and I also got to think about some of my favorite teachers. From high school, from middle school, elementary, I thought about what was impactful for me, the kind of energy and attitude and moments that these teachers created that were important to me and helped me grow as a person and as a learner. That was really helpful for me to kind of hone the style that I was going for as a teacher and create the kind of personhood around teaching that I believed in that was felt right for me. And so it's really funny looking back at some of my early ideas of what I thought I wanted to be as a teacher. so rough. I feel like not a lot of people understood even my purpose. They didn't have a really specific function for me um, or had clear expectations. It was kind of like I showed up and I had to figure everything out. In many cases, I didn't even know what was going on that day or what classroom I would be in. Almost like charades like ability to think on the spot on the tip of my toes. <laughs> you end up having a few particular cases or students that you work closest to and also working as a kind of walking dictionary because students and teachers will have questions about, well, how do you say this? And sometimes you end up just kind of being a translation machine. In other cases, you have five or six activities that feel right with you, that you've found and you can use again and again. Something like, would you rather you stand in the corner of a room based on your preference on a certain topic? You know, would you prefer the mountains 
the beach, staying at home, or, I don't know. I finished my first year teaching as an auxiliar feeling really inspired about education as a practice. So that first year, um, participating online with other auxiliars in different forums and communities, I was also taking to some reading. Bell Hooks, Paolo Ferriere, and Howard Gardner were some of my favorite writers about education, teaching, and learning, and they're still a very core part of my teaching and learning philosophies. One of the things that all three of those speak on is the idea of a radical education, what Bell Hooks calls teaching to transgress. I've been thinking about this idea a lot actually lately right now. She talks about teaching to transgress as the idea that you shouldn't take a formal instruction or a curriculum and just passively digest something. Paolo Freire talks about, about the banking system of information or the banking system of instruction where there's a transaction. I give this to you, you ingest it, and then it, you're supposed to be tested on it and reproduce it. So Bell Hooks says that, no, actually, you need to scrap all of that and do some critical thinking. So going against the formal structures of learning and being able to create your own ideas, use your imagination and your brain to imagine new possibilities and create new things. And Howard Gardner also talks about unschooling and the idea that the education model is an old industrial model. You know, the neatly packed little rooms on a similar nine to five schedule keep kids not in, um, it's not a learning structure, it's a compliance system, something like that. There's still so much I have to learn about all of this. And I again hope that this is just an opening of a discussion that continues on this channel about teaching and learning. It's something I feel very invested in. So I've talked about two steps in my teaching journey, from teaching private classical guitar lessons to working as an auxiliar in a public primary school in Spain. And now my third and favorite part is the last three years I've worked at a private nonprofit school called the American School of Madrid. That is where I became a really good teacher, in my opinion. <laughs> That's where I learned about all of these, to me, like fancy, real uh, teaching things like differentiated instruction. The American School of Madrid is where I got my professional development. I watched other teachers teach. I got critiqued on my teaching. I had formal processes and procedures and things that I, you know, like exit slips, for example, or um, something to prime people's learning. Other things like brain breaks, the idea that you need to get up and move around sometimes never really happened in my Spanish public school teaching experience, but at the American School of Madrid, people accept that um, each child is a whole person and they're not just a brain sitting at a desk that needs to reproduce information. They need to have fun, they need to play, they need to take risks and grow and fall down and get up and all of these things. And a part of that is recognizing you have a body and you need to get some energy out every once in a while. Kids aren't just academic machines, they're social and emotional creatures. And so sometimes you are feeling upset about something and you need to do what is called in responsive classroom take a break and this is common in elementary classrooms because it's easier to kind of negotiate those um, cultural expectations and norms in uh, an environment where people are very young and as they get older I think they're more like set in their ways developmentally and um, also as a culture as a society we don't create the same kind of relationships with people in middle and high school because we expect them to be more self-reliant and independent and um, doing their own thing rather than telling them directly this is how you do XYZ thing. But responsive classroom and the idea of um, go take a break and having these kind of structures and protocols is slowly trickling in I think to middle and upper school. Um, but we'll see what happens. So the idea is if I'm feeling upset about something, I would go take a break, calm my body down, recenter myself, and when I'm ready to go back to the lesson, I can go find my spot and join the rest of the class. Now the other thing that kind of happened simultaneously is I became an instructor for Future Design School, and they're based out of Canada. They work with design firms and companies and think tanks, and also schools and different learning environments, communities like libraries or local maker spaces, and they run programs 
to help kids understand what's happening in industry and bridging those two worlds between real practice and what happens in schools. It's a beautiful marriage of real life practice and school philosophy. Future Design School is all about 21st century learning, so you think of the four C's, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. That's what you learn at Future Design School, that's what you teach at Future Design School, and the way you do that, there's a couple different ways, um, and I'll throw their link down in the description of this video, so you can go check them out if you're interested. They also offer professional development. If you're a teacher or administrator, uh, someone at a school who are, is looking for some use in your professional development budget, I definitely recommend Future Design School so your kids can be prepared for the future of work and um, also have a really good time now in the present of work and their current school environment and learning in life. Also during this time, I applied to be a National Geographic Certified Educator and there you talk about the natural and the human-made world and the different um, areas within each of those. They have a National Geographic learning and teaching framework, which has different channels or ways of thinking about uh, the world and also being an explorer. So it's not just the kinds of content areas you're learning, it's also about the kinds of attitudes you have to be open to failure, to be open to growing, to be open to exploring and discovering different stuff out in the world. Some of the other things that I've been looking out for and drawing inspiration from are communities like Hyperdox, Teachers Guild, and Creative Reaction Lab with Antoinette Carroll. So those are the places that I've been and I can now switch over to where I'm going. The fourth chapter of my teaching learning journey is going to be teaching at a university, which is a huge jump from teaching private guitar lessons, to teaching primary at a public Spanish school, to teaching primary and also some other things in a K-12 private school that is mostly U.S. curriculum. I'm going to be teaching 18-19 year olds at the University of Michigan in a Communications 101 class that goes over histories and theories of communication. I'm super excited. I get to work with Susan J. Douglas, who is an amazing um, scholar, academic, and writer. I've had to do some more thinking about the promise that I want to make to myself and my people as an educator. And um, I'll just read what I have straight out of the books. What do I want for my students? I want for them to do the reading, come to class, contribute to discussions, or share their thinking in a way that works for them, feel comfortable making mistakes, growing and learning, and do work they are proud of. How can I make them feel like they're getting meaningful feedback that they can improve on by picking out the things that are strong in their work. Is there anything I'm missing? <laughs> um, so those are what I'm thinking of as the four chapters of my teaching learning journey. I hope this gives you some material to chew on and think about where you're at in your teaching learning journey and maybe do a write-up or a video or some kind of reflection of your own. Even just leave me a little comment and let me know how you did this year and where you're at as a teacher. There are so many challenges in this profession and so many beautiful things as well. I think we should all be proud of what we're doing and keep an eye on the future and what we have to improve on. Seriously, kudos to you, all of you teachers out there. You're doing amazing work. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm gonna be talking about teaching as well as information science and um, some of my experiences living abroad in Spain on this channel. And I make new videos every week, so don't feel like this is goodbye. This is just see you later. I'm gonna make another cup of coffee. <laughs>